We continue our discussion on location methods and tune measurements. Still on the head, we uh, discuss today lower face and chin, ear region, and the occiput. So on the lower face and chin, first we have here the mandibular angle. The mandibular angle corresponds to the area with the where the lower jawline changes its direction from horizontal to vertical. It is located markedly inferior and anterior to the earlobe. This angle marks the location of stomach six, which is one finger width anterior and superior to the mandibular angle, as well as stomach 17, uh, no, SI-17 and triple burner 16, which is at the level of the mandibular angle. Next, we have the masseter muscle. Uh, by firmly clenching the jaw, the contours of the masseter muscle becomes well-defined, stretching from the lateral aspect of the lower jaw to the zygomatic bone. It originates at the zygomatic arch and inserts at the mandibular angle. Here we have an illustration uh, showing the zygoma, the zygomatic arch, and the temporal mandibular, mandibular joint relative to the points GB3, triple burner 22, triple burner 21, stomach 7. And another illustration showing where the masseter, the zygomatic bone, the mandibular angle, and the sternocleidomastoid muscle relative to triple burner 16, SI17, stomach 6, stomach 5, and SI18. Next, we have here the mental labial groove. This forms a transverse groove at the junction of the chin and the lower lip. REN24 is located in its center. Here we have an, uh, illustrations of the anatomy of the ear showing the helix, the antihelix, the antitragus, the lobe, the helix root, and the supertragic notch the tragus and the intertragic notch. And the acupuncture points near this area. So here we have the, uh, specifically we have the helix root. This borders the upper part of the ear and this is lo the location of triple burner 22. The helix root borders the upper part of the ear. As mentioned earlier, this is, the, this is the location of triple burner 22. Next, we have the supratragic notch, which forms an incisure within the cartilage of the ear, separating the helix root from the tragus. This is point triple burner 21 and is located anterior to it. The tragus is where SI9 is located anterior to the midpoint of the tragus. The intertragic notch um, forms an incisure in the auricular cartilage, separating the tragus from the lobe and the antitragus. GB, GB2 is located anterior to this notch. Next, we have the earlobe. Um, inferior to the earlobe and the ear canal is a depression which is bordered posteriorly by the mastoid process and anteriorly by the lower jaw. The lower border is formed by the transverse process of the first cervical vertebra. It is where uh, triple burner 17 is located in this depression. Okay. Next, we have the border between the auricle and the face. The border between the auricle and the face and the temple or the cheek, or the cheek generally forms a more or less vertical line which will become more clearly defined by bending the auricle and tragus towards the anterior. Several points are located along this line from top to bottom, namely triple burner 22, triple burner 21, SI19, and GB2. Next, we have the mastoid process. The mastoid process is a cone-shaped bony structure which can be palpated posterior to the ear. Point GB12 is located at its tip while the anion or the 
ex exhn extra point can be found at the border of the mastoid process and the occiput. Uh, acupuncture point exhn14 or eming is located somewhat more inferiorly. Next, we have here the transverse process of the first cervical vertebra. The transverse process of the atlas can be palpated inferior to the earlobe as, deep, as a deep bony structure, which in most cases is a very sensitive to pressure. Here we have a, an illustration showing the transverse process of the atlas, its axis, and its other parts. And the, another, this, another illustration showing the different acupuncture points near this area. Okay. Next, we have the craniocervical transition. The transition from the head to the neck is formed by the mastoid process. The, adjacent dorsal musculature and the occiput. The following points are located in this area from the lateral to medial. Uh, these points are GB12, Yiming, Anmyan, GB20, Bladder 10, Do15, and Do16. Next, we have external occipital protuberance. The external occipital protuberance forms a flat projection on the posterior midline of the occiput which can be palpated slightly superior to the craniocervical transition. It defines the location of DO16, DO17, and bladder 9. Sometimes, and more frequently in women, the protuberance may be defined only poorly or not at all. Next, we have the posterior hairline. The posterior hairline is used as a reference point for locating points on the occiput, but due to its variable position, it is not a very reliable landmark. 